Emma, aka Lucharel, and I am going to launch my webcomic Blood Knot in either a month or two months. Hopefully, uh, closer to a month. I have many things left to do, but I've been working really hard for a long time now to get it up and going. Um, and just so you know, this is my first YouTube video, and I am very nervous when it comes to talking into the microphone, and I'm also very tired because it is past my bedtime, but I'm trying to get things done. Um, so my webcomic, Blood Knot, um, I don't want to spoil anything, so especially because I haven't launched it yet, I'm going to keep it really, uh, really vague. So I'll just read, like, straight off of my website for now <laughs> to make sure I keep it vague and simple for the moment. Um, so Luke Lumaban is a 17-year-old who pours more time into music and sailing than into his social life. As he struggles to come to terms with plans to move out of his childhood home, he stumbles upon the secret to a classmate's disappearance. A secret that redefines everything he has ever known. Blood Knot is a webcomic that weaves together reality and folklore. It's a story that explores the bonds between characters as they grow from struggles mystical and mundane alike. So it's kind of a YA. It's got YA vibes. <laughs> it has um, fantasy elements as well as periods of the story that are more slice of life. So it's, it's definitely a mix of things. Um, but it's a story that is very self-indulgent <laughs> and something that I'm really excited to work on every single day when I wake up, uh, which is really a dream for me. I've, I've spent quite a few years forgetting what that feels like, so it, it feels like coming home and I'm really excited to be able to get this out into the world. Um, and just so you know what you're getting into as far as this YouTube video, um, I, I just really don't know YouTube. I don't know how to put things on the internet and it gives me a lot of anxiety. Um, I grew up and am currently still living in the boonies of Virginia, so I don't have to this day very good internet. Um, I am planning on moving soon, so I will hopefully have good internet again. I've lived in places with good internet, so I've kind of experienced the joy of it here and there, um, but I've never, for many, many, many years on end, just been able to be a part of the internet and internet spaces, including YouTube, because you have to have internet to stream. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm just ready to make mistakes and learn when it comes to the webcomic and YouTube and anything else. But I would definitely not expect the uh, most concise and to the point and well edited, edited videos from me for a while, and that's okay. Um, if you are into speed drawings for the moment because those are the easiest for me to figure out and eventually hopefully some drawings that are more real time um, then welcome to my channel. I do hope one day to actually use this as a, a chance to get back into some traditional art um, because or actually I say back into but I've never really gotten into traditional art and I have all of these art supplies because I went to art school and I want to just make things for myself um, traditionally but I just never I've gotten really frustrated with it and quit every single time um, so I think that one day on this channel I'd like to use this as an opportunity to just 
learn how to use some traditional mediums because I think that it would help me in my digital art as well. Um, I've pretty much only done digital stuff uh, except for sometimes in college and like drawing in line sketchbooks in high school. <laughs> so uh, a majority of my experience has been digitally and for the most part I haven't done a whole lot of color so there are many areas that I am excited to uh, use comics as a way to improve. Um, and as for this video and me not quite knowing how to do YouTube things, um, I apologize for my ums and my spacing out and my ands. <laughs> Basically, uh, if you're listening to the audio, who knows what you're in for, but thank you for your patience. Um, feel free to, if you're not into listening to me, ramble, because that's what's going to happen every time. Then you can listen to some music and, and mute me and watch the speed draw, and that works. And by speed draw, this is... Um, uh, you know, I'll get into that in a second. Um, but this is my first webcomic and first YouTube video. So this is a whole lot of first and I don't know what I'm doing basically. So forgive me and thank you. And I'm excited to learn. Um, and so in these videos, <laughs> along with the art um, and me being a mess, uh, I'm definitely just going to kind of ramble about whatever music I'm listening to or what book I'm reading and the fact that I had a chocolate chip cookie from Costco today and it was really exciting I really like those chocolate chip cookies they're very soft and I don't like crunchy things most of the time there are exceptions um, but anyway so you have a taste of what you're getting into now um, so, <laughs> finally on to the video. Uh, this is my webcomic. Um, it is, again, not launched yet, but will be launched soon. Um, and break while we look at the dog. I forgot that I put these in there. So that was my dog, or my parents' dog, Athena. And... I have been enjoying the weather lately because it's spring finally. Um, I actually don't like the bugs, but I love the cherry blossom tree blooming. So I took some of these shots uh, while I sat under it and read a book. Um, and then I did remember to put them in here, but I forgot that they were coming. So yeah, those, those have been some great moments. Uh, I sat out there yesterday and today and read Haruki Murakami's uh, 1Q84 because I almost finished that series once and then, I don't know, I got sad or something and stopped finishing it. So not sad at the book, just life. Um, and so I was really sad that I didn't finish it and because I, I don't want to just jump into the end of like the third book. <laughs> um, I'm just going to restart the whole thing. So that's what I'm doing. And I love his writing. Um, and it's, it's a joy. But I'm also having a really hard time making myself sit down and actually read because my brain is just wired wrong now for reading. Uh, I used to read like five books a week every week in like middle school and uh, high school even parts of high school but college definitely gave me almost no time to read and I haven't quite picked up the habit again but that's okay because I'm gonna fix that I feel so much more like myself when I'm reading books on a daily basis so I'm yeah I'm excited about that um, so <laughs> back to try number three uh, what the video is doing in the background so this is my comic it 
isn't launched yet will be in hopefully a month, maybe two. But I am hoping a month because I have everything mapped out. And yeah, I should be able to do it in a month uh, at the earliest. So that's the goal. Um, the video is the chapter cover for the first chapter on the left and the first page of the first chapter on the right. I am working in spreads because it is a lot easier for me to look at everything holistically because this, it, you know, I decided to not do a webtoon. I just really wanted it to be in the format of a printed book. Uh, I think that it just fits better for my purposes. I really wanted to play with the be able to play with the compositions and stuff on the printed page and I really want to hold the book in my hands so this is the format that I'm doing um, and I actually I don't know I've always had a hard time because I like to see how things are going to look and like consider everything holistically but I didn't know how to approach it and then um, Mina or Humming Fluff who does uh, Stand Still, Stay Silent, the amazing webcomic. Um, she does her pages and uh, spreads, and I, just watching her work, many things clicked, and um, I'm obviously still figuring everything out, but I definitely feel more comfortable working in spreads versus pages. And at the end of working on the pages, I just cut out, um, I saved like a whole bunch of different versions including the individual pages on either side that are cut out from this. Um, and those will be what I upload digitally. So, um, it is, I actually had a really hard time figuring out how to record in Clip Studio Paint at first, but um, they have a new feature where you can record like every brushstroke or I guess thing that is done in the program so it is not at like a two times speed or three times speed or anything it's more like procreate where every brush stroke or thing you do to the canvas is recorded um, not all of the very long breaks where I stare off in the distance or um, jam out to music or go to the bathroom or something um, those are completely cut out and it's also not a very set speed so I, I don't know exactly how much faster this is going uh, than it actually took to do but um, and I also don't have a very good estimate for how long it took me my goal is to get down to like 15 hours a page or for each page however this one took me a while because I would, it's my first spread for this webcomic. It took me a while. <laughs> I had to figure out what worked and didn't work. And there are certain things that took so long on this page that made me frustrated, but ended up being okay because I learned not to do them for the next page. <laughs> An example is, the speech bubbles, I did put them in here just as a placeholder, but I didn't know what final form I wanted them to look like, and I just wanted them there so I could move on with the inking and the sketching and, and have them take that visual space up, um, but I just didn't put enough thought into the final form of them. and. That includes how big they needed to be for the uh, the text that goes in it. I, I didn't have a reference point for how big the text needed to be. I just realized I was talking really loud, so I'm sorry. Sometimes I get excited. I'll try to calm down. Uh, so anyway, I learned a lot on this page. Um, so with the hardware and the software that I'm using, I am working on a 12.9 inch iPad Pro and um, it has 500 gigabytes of memory because I 
got so sick and tired of my MacBook Pro that I've had since like 2014. It has half that memory and I, I've been living off of hard drives for years and it's been awful. So I wanted to make sure that this had the maximum memory uh, it could I could buy. Um, and at the time I had a good income. Don't right now, but that's okay. At the time I did and I could afford it and I have no regrets about purchasing it because I just really love the feeling of drawing on the iPad and I can take it anywhere. And I have had to, I mean, my, for instance, my grandmother had a lot of health problems. I had to go down at 4 a.m. Um, and help her out. And I was able to just throw this in a bag, um, run down there and stay with her at night to make sure she didn't fall or anything, which she did and it was fine. Um, but I had my little iPad set up. I just kind of whipped it out and I could work because I was not ready to go back to sleep at that point. Um, and I made use of my time versus sitting around and being sad. So um, it, it helps a lot to be able to take it places. Um, and I definitely went back and forth between this and like a Surface Pro, I think, one of those. Um, because they were like the same price and they both had amazing reviews and um, I think this just felt better and that was so important to me that I went ahead with this. But I also hate certain Apple iOS things about it. Like the file management is miserable. Um, but I still have no regrets because there are workarounds and... It, it's fine. Um, what I'm doing here with all those fancy colors, <laughs> pretty colors, right? Um, was just doing a layer, a single layer with all those different colors to fill in certain parts like the fish or the rocks because uh, then I can go into that layer and either with the selection tool or with the color gamut tool, which will select everything on the canvas in with one range of color for like one layer. Um, I can use those tools to select a part of the image and then go back to my painting layer. And it helps me to work within certain locations, like just on the fish, or I can select the fish and then invert it and do all of the ground around the fish um, and that just helps keep everything a lot cleaner um, I'm getting loud again but yeah that's I, I've been trying to keep things on fewer layers than before because previously like the background would have a layer and then the rocks on top would have a layer and then and by that I mean the little pebbles so the pebbles would have a layer and then the rocks would have a layer and then the fish would have a layer and then all of the little effects on top would have a layer like an overlay layer and a this and a that and I just it was just too much um, so I'm trying to use as few layers as possible I keep most of it on one layer uh, I do have other layers sometimes for specific things, like I, um, the like highlights on the top of the water where the stream is. Um, those I end up taking out from the original thumbnail version, and I make that a separate layer and just kind of hide it until the end, because that's something that I just wanted to go ahead and paint over but he keep it for the end because it was like a finishing effect so certain situations like that i do make a new layer but most of the time if i make a new layer i merge it right away um so it's it's just a lot of me testing out new techniques and that is one of them um ask me after 40 spreads if i'm still doing it <laughs> We'll see. 
Uh, so far, I do like that, though. And you can see here that I, I did not like how thick the outline was for each of the panels. So I, like, totally redid that, and then I ended up having to go back and... Um, I decided I didn't even want the outline at all. I wanted it to just kind of be the background of each of the panels that goes straight into the water and fish and stuff under it. So I, I had to kind of paint in some of the stuff that the panel border is covering up because it wasn't cleanly up to the edge of the the background of the panels and it was just a whole thing. It took me way longer than it should have. Um, but I, I learned and then for the next page, the next spread, I was able to um, completely avoid that problem by thinking ahead. So it's all good. Um, so that's what I am drawing on. I am a bit weird because I use Procreate sometimes more for illustrations, not so much for uh, the comics. For comics and illustrations right now, because I'm really in a Clip Studio Paint mindset, I am using Clip Studio Paint. Uh, it's a subscription you have to buy for the iPad, but I, I have owned it outright on the computer since I was in high school. So I think it was like $100 or less for the computer. And the subscription would be a lot, but I use it every single day, all day. <laughs> um, because I think it's $70 a year or something. It's It sounds like a lot, but compared to Photoshop, it it's way cheaper. So I definitely recommend it uh, if you haven't used it before. It's really great when it comes to inking. Um, it feels very clean and I remember the first time I tried it with inking after trying to ink in Photoshop for a long time. It felt so good because I used to have a PC and with PC you can use Paint Tool Sci which also felt amazing to ink in. <laughs> But then I moved to a Mac, and you can't have, you cannot run Paint Tool, uh, yeah, Paint Tool Sci on a Mac. So I was very sad. Um, and I tried Photoshop for a long time, and I hated it. Uh, I just kept thinking I was doing something wrong. But no, it just felt really bad. That's all it was. It was just Photoshop. So I got Clip Studio Paint, and it was great. Um, as well as uh, that, I use a keyboard in Procreate and Clip Studio Paint. Whatever I do, I have this like little Artec keyboard, A-R-T-E-C-K. It's just basically a super cheap Bluetooth keyboard that I got on Amazon. And it's my best friend. I use it at all times. I just, I grew up having the keyboard to do shortcuts um, in Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint on the computer when I had the type of, like an Intuos or something, the type of tablet you have to look at the computer and draw on the screen separately below. I can't words right now, I'm kind of tired. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I'm really used to shortcuts and they speed up my process a lot. Um, so I use the keyboard in Procreate and I use it in Clip Studio Paint. I just love it all the time. And Clip Studio Paint is amazing with the keyboard because you can personalize almost anything. So I just, I have like a really weird setup that I arbitrarily made. Like the number one on the Artec keyboard flips the canvas horizontally and it's a type of preview flip that Clip Studio Paint has so if I flip it and I save it I'm not accidentally saving the flipped version because I do that a lot in like Procreate and then I realize later <laughs> oops um, and then like the number six I have mapped to 
horizontally flip whatever object is whatever layer I'm on um, because for some reason that just makes sense in my mind the number nine uh, is what I use to import from photos into Clip Studio Paint. Yeah, so it's very arbitrary, but it works for me and I really like it. I have a lot of things mapped to it. Um, so I also, a new addition to my setup is this fantastic computer that my friend Sam helped to make. Um, he helped build it for me and he got all the parts for me and everything and helped me out with the whole thing so it's been fantastic it's really pretty it has some lights and I stare at them sometimes and I also got a monitor um, that's way bigger than for some reason I thought it would be and it's wonderful so I'm basically in heaven with my setup because I also have a standing desk and it's um it's the autonomous standing desk, uh, the whatever one's the cheapest, like the basic or something. It's, it's still not cheap, but I got it because I was looking into ergonomic chairs, like you know, nice gaming chairs or whatever, um, because I was really, I'm just, I'm worried about my physical health and maintaining it. <laughs> because I'm accident prone and I sit stupid in the chair and everything um, but chairs are really expensive so as expensive as this table is <laughs> it's way cheaper than most of the chairs that I you know that looked like what I needed so instead I got a uh, an exercise ball and I use my old broken chair and I stand on a standing mat because if you stand, you have to have a standing mat. And they're kind of expensive, like 40 bucks, but they're worth it. So I, I stand a lot. I'm standing right now. Helps you do a little dance when you work. I can draw when I stand. Um, I go from standing to sitting all the time. I'll use the chair and the exercise ball interchangeably. And so that helps me a lot uh, not be as sedentary doesn't mean I don't have days <laughs> but most of the time I can stand up for like half of the day that I'm working um, so yeah I will put Sam uh, my friend I mentioned he cosplays and has a really great Instagram so I will put him in the description below um, and I see we're getting kind of close to the end, so I also just wanted to mention that I know my comic isn't launched, but I have a newsletter that you can sign up for on my website, um, and this newsletter will, I think it sends you a welcome email first as soon as you sign up, and then, uh, you'll get another email when I am ready to launch the comic, so that way in this busy, busy 2021 world, um, you can get a little reminder to check back in because I know it's not tomorrow, but it's also not that far away. Uh, and the newsletter can remind you. So definitely check out my comic. It's bloodnotcomic.com. And I'm also gonna obviously link that below um, and maybe elsewhere in the video, I'm not sure. So. I would really appreciate you signing up for the newsletter just to, you know, make sure you are reminded to check back in. Um, I am planning on updating it eventually four times a week, which is a lot. Um, and I do believe I can do it. However, I won't be able to do it four times a week and also have our part-time job. And that is probably what I'm going to have to do once I move. So at least in the beginning, it will probably be two to three times a week um, once I get settled in and get that part-time job. <laughs> so um, eventually, hopefully four times a week, if I'm able to focus wholly on the webcomic, but two to three times a week, which is not so bad uh, once everything gets going. 
I am working on my buffer now, so um, I the move won't affect anything. So I uh, I know this was really rambly, and I'm a bit of a mess, but thank you for watching. I learned a lot with this spread. Um, since you're at the end of the video with me, Easter egg. <laughs> That uh, high school in the video at the top is very directly based on my high school because it makes sense with the story and I just really wanted to put that little Easter egg in for myself because I thought it was funny. Um, it, so yeah, he's like going to my school except it's named something different. Um, but thanks for tuning in and I'll make another video at some point in the next few weeks or sooner um, check out that newsletter and I will talk to you soon thank ya baby